Hi everyone! Okay, so it's been a long time since I made a video, but I have some huge updates for you. First of all, I bought a car! I bought a car! Yes, we got a freaking car here in Puerto Rico. We learned so much about buying a car here, shipping a car here, buying new versus used. So I wanted to make a quick video for anyone who is going through the car buying process or is just trying to get a car in Puerto Rico and tell you about everything that I have learned. So buckle up and let's get to it. So first of all, like I'm just like so excited to finally have a car. I lived in New York City for 10 years and did not have a car there. And for the most part, it was fine. I actually loved it. But towards the end, I was like really missing that freedom of being able to just get in the car and drive upstate or something like that. And we moved to Puerto Rico in December and it's now what the end of june so pretty much we haven't had a car this whole time we have been walking everywhere ubering everywhere riding those scooters everywhere um so we were just so excited to finally have our own car uh what took so long so unfortunately we bought a house also we bought a condo and that process was miserable like miserable so miserable i was really excited to make a ton of videos about buying a house and how to do the mortgage process it was so bad that i don't think i even want to make a video about it i'm still up in the air i don't want to be like one of those channels that has a bunch of negative stuff to say and honestly i don't have anything nice to say about it so yeah i'm still debating on whether or not i want to make a video about buying our condo um, but literally because it took five months to close we were waiting the whole time to buy a car because you can't make any big purchases before you buy like you close on your mortgage otherwise it affects your credit and blah 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 so the day that we closed on the condo we closed at like 11 a.m i think we literally left there and went to the dealership and bought a car <laughs> like we were so ready we had actually already scoped out a couple things that we wanted so we already knew what we were going to buy we were just waiting for the house to close okay so through this process we have learned so much about little funny details about buying cars in puerto rico so i wanted to make a video to just let you know everything that we have learned because it was quite a lot first of all i have some notes here because i wanted to make sure that i had everything lined up um but first of all there's one big thing that you should know and that's that cars here are way more expensive than if you're buying them in the mainland and there's a couple reasons for that one being that you have to pay an import tax you have to pay to have the car shipped here so that's another fee and then two is obviously there's a lot more limited supply here on the island than if you were like say you were in texas well you can also buy not just from texas but oklahoma new mexico like you could pretty much realistically drive wherever you wanted um but no here obviously you're on an island surrounded by water comment below if you know who that quote is from <laughs> anyways so we were looking into everything so let's start with shipping a car here let's say that you move here and you already have a car or you just see a really good deal in the states so there's kind of two big things you have to know about that one is how much does it cost to ship a car so we found from florida that you can ship a car for somewhere around like 1200 to 1600 dollars so not terrible if it's an expensive car, but if it's a cheap car that's only like $10,000, I mean, that's adding 10% to how much that car costs. Yeah. Then on top of that, you also have to pay an import tax. Um, and I actually found a really interesting resource from the Puerto Rican government. So I'll link that below where you can estimate what your import taxes are based on what the car is. But I would say, in general, because of these two fees, expect to pay 10 to 20% more for any car 
that's in Puerto Rico than you would on the mainland. So if you have your eye on a car and you know how much it costs in the mainland, add 10 to 20% and that's how much it'll be to buy one here. Okay, so let's go back to that import tax. There is one caveat to that and that is if you are importing an electric car. Obviously, everybody wants to get off fuel and having electric cars here on the island would be better for not just the island, but the whole world. So if you're planning to ship a Tesla or something like that, just know I believe there are no import taxes. I could be wrong, maybe it's like a hundred bucks or something, but if it's not something really cheap, it's actually free. Um, just make sure to do your research. I am not your uh, Puerto Rican consultant. <laughs> Now, just because there's no import taxes on electric cars, do not think for a second that those cars are going to be equal or cheaper here than they are in the mainland. Uh-uh-uh, quite the opposite. I feel like here everybody wants one, um, but because they're still kind of a rarity in the US, obviously shipping them here has not been a priority. So there's a lot less electric cars here than there are demand. Uh, we actually wanted to look into the new electric Jeeps and pretty much they are non-existent here. So we unfortunately had to buy a gas car, um, but we did look into it and electric cars are just as expensive, if not more expensive than like what you would be willing to pay in the States. The other thing about electric cars here that we took into consideration is there's really no charging ports here. Um, in the States, especially like California and stuff, I know that there's like these gas stations uh, that are all like electric portals or like sometimes you'll go like electric charging stations or sometimes you'll go to grocery stores and they'll have like that special electric spot where you can charge up while you're in Whole Foods. I have never seen that here once. I've never ever seen a public charging port once. The only time I have ever seen like a Tesla brick or anything for charging your car is in someone's private driveway. So that's the other thing is if you're planning to move here and live in an apartment or a condo, having an electric car is pretty unrealistic. The only way that I think you could realistically have an electric car here is to have your own house and put your own charging brick in your house. Okay, so let's talk about buying a car new versus buying a used car here. So the biggest, craziest thing that we learned about buying a used car here is that when you get a ticket in Puerto Rico, the ticket belongs to the car, not the person that like was driving the car. And this is so crazy to me. The, even the concept of it. So let's say for instance that um, you get a parking ticket. Well, if you get a parking ticket in New York, you, the person, is responsible for that ticket. And you, the person, whoever that car is registered to, is whose ticket that is. But here in Puerto Rico, if you are parked somewhere and you get a ticket and you don't pay that ticket and then you sell the car, that ticket goes along with the car. The new owner of that car is now responsible for that parking ticket that you accrued. It's such an interesting concept to me. Um, obviously, I only say this to say, if you're trying to get an, a used car here, you need to do a very thorough check and make sure that there are no outstanding tickets or anything else like that associated with this car because you will inherit it. Um, there is no getting out of this. You will inherit this. It is completely legal and there's no getting out of it. So do your due diligence before you buy any used cars here on the island. So because of this and some other things that we heard about, we decided that we wanted to work with a reputable dealer on the island. We were initially looking on classificados. We were looking on Facebook Marketplace at used cars. Um, and just because of everything that we've heard and other like uh, nightmares that we've heard of, we we're like, whatever, let's just go work with a dealer. Maybe we'll pay a little bit more. Maybe we'll get it at the same price, but the peace of mind for us was definitely worth a potential small increase in price than trying to haggle with like Joe Schmo from Facebook Marketplace. 
So we decided to work with Auto Grupo. We love them. This video is not sponsored at all. Uh, we get nothing for saying this, but the experience there was awesome. And the thing about Auto Grupo was we went there and looked at a car and then we said, hey, we saw this other thing that you listed. It was at like a neighboring Auto Grupo. And so they just drove us over there to look at it. So your one sales rep from Auto Grupo can get you any car across the whole island that Auto Grupo currently owns. So don't think that you have to like go to one and only pick something there. They have tons of options across the entire island. So negotiating for new versus used. So obviously negotiating for the used car is going to be a lot easier because they bought it for a set price, they marked it up a premium, and they're willing to haggle with you a little bit more than if you were to get a new car. So we pretty much didn't haggle because we were so like beat down from the house buying process. At this point we were like, please just give us a car. Like we'll take anything, um, which, probably was not the right thing to do. Um, but that's pretty much where our mindset was going into it. Um, they did offer us a thousand dollars off if we were to close that day. But like I said, we were waiting on this stupid mortgage to close. So we didn't even have the option to close that day if we wanted to take advantage of that. So buying the car and your options for financing are pretty much exactly the same as in the US. You can lease a car here. So basically what that means is you choose like say a five year lease. At the end of the lease, you can either change it for a brand new car or you can buy out the car and take it. Um, they did say it was slightly different than the US, but we didn't lease the car. So, and I didn't write down this in my notes. So I don't remember exactly what they said was slightly different, but to me, it sounded exactly the same. So take, with, take that for how you want it. <laughs> So the loan terms and the interest were exactly the same as the states. Um, my boyfriend thankfully had really good credit. And so they basically said, how much do you want to put down? And we said nothing. <laughs> and so they let us put nothing down. Um, and we got pretty much the exact same rate that we got for our house. Before the actual loan, we decided to finance the car instead of paying cash. Obviously you can do both in I think any country. Um, and their lender was a local lender and I forget exactly who it was, but it was a large bank that I had heard of. It's not Banco Popular, I don't believe. Um, but you can choose six or seven year term and then each of them obviously has a correlating interest rate based on how much you put down. Uh, we didn't put anything down and we pretty much just drove away with just paying the insurance which was interesting and I'll get into that in a little bit further in this video of like how much we had to put down um, that day and then what our like payments are looking like. So the whole process from the time we said we'll take this car to the time we left that day was three hours. Um, but what was so funny is we weren't done and my sister was in town. My sister and her husband were in town. So they knew that we were like kind of in a hurry and obviously three hours is not a hurry, but they basically let us drive away. We had filled out a bunch of paperwork and stuff like that. And they said, oh, just come back on Monday and we'll finish it. Puerto Ricans are so nice. It's honestly crazy. I don't know if that was a nice thing or something they do for everyone, but we were just shocked because we had not finished the actual like financing part of it. Um, but like, obviously like they had his social and all the information that you take. So like they knew where to find us, um, but it was crazy. They just gave us the car and then trusted us to come back on Monday to finish the process for the financing and getting like the insurance and everything like that set up. And what's crazy is we bought this about three or four weeks ago now, I think three weeks ago. Um, and they were still asking like three weeks after for certain papers, proof of this, proof of that. So the process of actually finishing was quite slow and shocking that they let us just leave with the car uh, without having all their ducks in a row. Um, but I guess that's how it goes here. Maybe they just trusted us. I have no freaking clue. So when we came back on Monday, that's when we had to finish the financing and basically pay for what kind of insurance you want. So we put nothing down on the car. The only thing that we had to pay for was the insurance and the title and registration. 
So I wrote all this down. I'm just gonna quickly go through this with you of what we were paying. So insurance for the extended warranty through Jeep, we got a Jeep, I don't know if I mentioned that in the video or not, was $3,300. Um, and then for six years, semi coverage was $6,000. So $1,000 a year for semi coverage. And then for full coverage, it was $1,300 to $1,400 per year. And then, so we basically chose one of those. I think we chose the full coverage. So that day we had to pay the 13 to $1,400. I forget where in that range it fell. And then the other thing you can choose is gap insurance. So gap insurance is like, we buy the car. We ended up buying a brand new car, by the way. Um, we, we were going to buy a used car and then we just got enamored and fell in love with this gorgeous Jeep that we saw. So of course we, you know, everything that we had like thought about like, oh, do the right thing with money, fell out the window as soon as we saw this Jeep and we got a brand new Jeep. Anyway, so gap insurance is for a brand new car, meaning like if we drove the Jeep off the lot and literally someone hit us right there, well, the second you drive the Jeep off the lot, the value decreases. Like they always say that used cars, this, or sorry, new cars, the second you drive off the lot, the value like goes down by like, 10, 20, 30% because it's not new anymore. So gap insurance will cover that newness factor rubbing off. So we paid $650 for gap insurance, meaning that they would get us a new car essentially if something happened like immediately to it, as opposed to like what the real value would have been, which would be like 30% less than what the ticket price is. I don't know if I explained that properly, but that's what gap insurance is. And then ongoing costs besides insurance. So title and registration was $594. And then after that, your registration is $200 every year. And then every two years, you have to have it inspected. And they said that would cost us about $10. So not too bad. Um, so one other crazy thing I want to mention is um, they're gonna ask you for things like your utility bills. Like they wanna make sure that you're living on the island. So if you literally just got here, you need to figure out a way to get a lease, a utility bill, something that shows that your residency basically. The other thing that was crazy is for the financing, the bank wanted a local reference. So thankfully, we do have family living here. Like I said in previous videos, my boyfriend's mom is Puerto Rican, so she has like a whole side of family and stuff. Uh, so he was able to put one of his aunts down. But we asked him, we asked them, okay, well, like, what if you just moved here and you don't know anyone? And they said, you have to have this reference, it's required and that you can use like a landlord, your employer, um, pretty much just like anyone who knows you. It doesn't have to be a family member or friend. It can be someone that you're doing business with um, can be your reference, but they have to be on the island. It can't be your Aunt Lindsay that lives in Florida. No, they have to be living in Puerto Rico. So we learned so much. I would love if you have bought a car, new or used, or you've shipped a car to Puerto Rico, I want you to write your uh, like experience down in the comments. I would love this video to be an accumulation of everybody's knowledge and experience so that other people who are moving here or buying their first car here um, can come here and like reference any sort of resources or small little gotchas like the tickets belonging to the car or anything like that. Um, so please down below leave that. Also, let me know what other kinds of videos you're wanting to see. Um, I've had I've had a rough couple like past month or two, which is why I haven't been um, posting, but I wanna get back into it. I'm thinking about making like day trip ideas from San Juan to other parts of the island. Um, I don't know, like maybe more if there's a, too many questions about buying a car, maybe I'll do a part two um, and answer any other questions. Obviously, like getting a mortgage here like is a whole thing that maybe I'll do a video on, maybe not, but let me know what other questions you have about relocating to Puerto Rico, living here, um, anything. <laughs> Okay, on that note, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you did, please leave this island emoji in the comments and have a great day.